Hello, everybody. Um, we last time we we are studying this beautiful chapter, chapter four, where Bhagwan is explaining the secret of his birth as well as the purpose of his birth. And we saw the verses uh, seven and eight mainly last time, uh, but in verse six he said, even though he is unborn, uh, it it appears as if he's born. It appears as if he grows, and all this is an appearance and the question then are and then the way he appears is by keeping maya under his control so the question arises is why are you doing it for us okay us is a forced birth we have no choice we have to take birth because we have done karmas which need to be now exhausted the vasanas need to be exhausted but if you don't have that problem then why are you taking birth so bhagwan gives two reasons first of all he says whenever there is when do you take birth and why do you take birth so i take birth when there is dharmasya glani so this dharmasya glani has to be understood i told you in two ways dharma glani is where dharma is getting destroyed uh, decayed reducing that sort of thing but dharma actually never changes never reduces never ever gets destroyed what is happening is this dharma here is a right code of con conduct a do's and don'ts the injunctions given by the vedas when people do not follow their own dharma the the dharma is as per our varna and ashrama and when that is not followed then it is as though dharmasya glani is happening as though it is not actually but if people are not following it then what is the point of those rules and regulations and why are people not following that because there is a lot of desires in their mind so they stop following their own dharma this is a direct hit at arjun who was who wanted to leave his own dharma and then go and beg for food so when that happens then bhagwan comes in that is one reason that the dharma se glani is happening and the other reason is when people start losing faith in that dharma so when they see other people doing adharmic things and then they are all prospering and then i am not prospering i have been following the all these rules honestly and i am not and then what happens is oh is there any validity to these rules so the faith starts decreasing that also is dharma se glani so then that's why bhagwan says i take birth tadamyam srijamyam i as though appear srijiti as though i am not that i am born but i appear in this world paritranaya sadhunam so to strike a balance between good and evil what happens is when there are more and more people who are not following dharma then there is an imbalance as was in in that time when the, the kauravas were getting more and more evil and more and more adharma was spreading and that's why he says i come and one thing i do is physically kill the bad people evil so to create a balance between good and bad physically the bad people are removed which he did in his birth starting right from his birth onwards if these are the people that he has um, uh, actually given moksha we shouldn't say kill whenever bhagwan kills anybody that person is getting moksha putana got moksha everybody who he killed kausa chanur shishupal everybody was given moksha so those who he, whom he killed and then he also destroyed the kauravas by helping the pandavas who were on the dharmic side so that is that is one aspect of his uh, striking a balance the other aspect he does is dharma sausthapana and dharma sausthapana is not creating a library of books what good is those are those books if nobody is reading them so dharma sausthapana in the minds of the people so the faith that is decreasing in the mind he reinforces that faith now can he do it at large no so he picks one person i told you in the beginning of bhagavad gita also arjun was hand picked by him to tell because people were following arjun arjun was a great leader of those times people used to look up to him so bhagwan thought if he understands this if he has faith in this if he follows this then other people are going to imitate him and that's how dharma sausthapana is done objectively reducing the evil people just destroying them so there is a balance so there are more good people so there is a again there is some sort of a balance between good and bad bad can never go away 0% it can never happen neither can good go to 0% because good and bad are two sides of the same coin so they can never go but 
there has to be some sort of semblance, some sort of balance between the two. That is what he does. And then he restores the faith in the minds of the leaders so that when the leaders follow, other people follow as well. So this is how he does it. Now we go to the next one, an important verse as well. Janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mame tusmame ti sorjuna. He who thus knows in true light my divine birth and action, having abandoned the body, he is not born again. He comes to me, O Arjuna. So Janma Karma Chamedi, in this verse, the word Tattvataha is the most important. That is the key word in this verse. So what Bhagwan is saying is Janma Karma Chamedi, my birth and my karmas, my actions are all divine. What does it mean by divine? So let's take birth first. So he says, my birth is divine. So one of the reasons why his birth is divine is because he it is not a forced birth. That is one reason. Forced, it is not forced. It is birth out of free will. That's why I've already told you. He chooses the time. He chooses the parents. He chooses the place. Everything is his. He is the director of his own show. So he just plays it out like that. So that is one reason that it is it, it is a birth out of free will. The second reason that it is divine is because Maya is under his control. At every moment in his life, he appears there, but at every moment, Maya is always under his control. So he is beyond, he, he remains like that. So he's not uh, under the control of Prakriti. The third reason is his birth, actual birth is Maya Rupam. Maya, the word Maya is Sa Maya Iti Maya. Um, yeah. Sa ma iti maya. Sa ma, ma here is negative, nothing. It's, it's, there is nothing. So, sa ma iti maya. Maya is that which is not there. That is what maya is. It is not there, but you see it, then that is maya. Sa ma iti maya. So, his birth is maya rupam because he says, I am actually infinite. From the highest standpoint, the pure self is infinite. But now it appears like I'm standing in this form. It is a infinite can never become finite. But having taken birth, it appears like there is a body. There is a finite body. It appears. It appears like that body is growing. And it appears like it, the body will get destroyed. It appears like he got destroyed. But infinity being beyond space, time, and objects. He says, even though you see me in this form, I am infinite. You think I'm limited. You think I'm standing in front of you or sitting in front of you, this limited person, but I am still infinite. And I know that I am that infinity. See, we are also infinite. But do we know that we are that infinite? That's why our birth is not divine. His is divine. Because having taken birth, he knows. Then he says, you think I'm standing in front of you, but I'm actually everywhere. As far as we are concerned, we think I'm here. That means I'm not there. I'm not even in the next room, let alone being anywhere else in the universe. But he says, you think that I am here, but I am everywhere. Then you think that I'm, because you said your birth is after Lord Son's birth. So you thought that I, I got I, I was born and I have grown. You're seeing the modifications in me, but I am changeless. Even though you see all these things, you see me standing in front of you, you see me as a form, you see me as being born, you see me as growing. I am that infinite self. I know that I am that infinite self and none of these things have happened to me. And that is what Maya is. It is not there, but this is how you are seeing it. That's why my birth is Maya Rupam. And that's why my birth is divine. So even though it is not there, it appears to be there. That is why my birth is divine. Now, next. Karma Chame Divya. My karma is also Divya. Because why? Because never ever is a karma phala created out of my karmas. Law of karma dictates that this karma will give result. 
that is why our karma is not divine because every karma that we do it is giving a result and it's forcing us into the next birth whereas he says whatever karma that i do there is no result that is binding me and so there is therefore there is no question of first birth now why is that karma that he is doing not binding him not giving any karma phala because only two things are, are i do dharma saustapana and paritranaya sadhunam that's all my function is that i will only establish dharma and i am only protecting the good people so there is no ego or egocentric desire behind my actions means means what there is no doership and there is no duty he said in chapter 3 in the three worlds i have no duty and yet i act so when he acts without doership without enjoyership only for the good of the totality that karma phala does not bind him okay that's why his birth and actions are both divine and bhagwan is saying the one who knows this now even we know this now will knowing that his birth and karma are divine will we get freed from punarjanma from rebirth no that's why he qualifies it yo veti tatvataha so that word becomes very very important what he is saying is in essence you should know this and what is the meaning of you should know this in essence the result of which is tyatva deha means having given up this body this person will not come back but before that is yo veti tatvata this word tatvataha is made out of two words tat and tvam so tatvataha means when you recognize the oneness between tat and tvam tatvamasi tat is that ishvara tvam is you the jiva when you recognize the jiva brahma i here it becomes tatvataha and to be, to get that tatvataha that means that is what is meant by knowing that his birth and his actions are divine that means we also have to make our birth and our actions divine then they will become divine once i come to know in a sense means i realize actually tatvata means you realize the oneness with, with him and then there will be no birth okay that is when now for us as sadhana self effort janma has already happened so we cannot touch that janma our birth has already happened so now you cannot go in the past and make it divine or any such thing it's happened leave it alone happened happened anything that has happened in the past we have no control what do we have control over is karma that is the only control that we have now with us so what we need to do is start making our karma divine how do i make it divine by following what bhagwan did what did he do on this earth dharma saustapana and paritrana sadhana that means what means every action of ours must be for the totality now what does that mean we need to understand it even at our level simple things you know what is good for the what i when i was thinking about this you know recycling very simple i right? extremely at our level like stop using plastic bags start recycling as per whatever they are telling how many people are not doing that at least canada we have some rules us has no rules everything is going into garbage in the us everything a to z whether it is vegetable so this dharma saustapana it is not like we have to go and establish some dharma anywhere else or we have to uh, tell somebody else but at least let us follow the varnashrama dharma at least let's follow my own dharma let me follow then when i do that maybe i'll be a role model for somebody else like for kids or whatever whoever whoever we are not going to worry about those things but we are ourselves going to follow that's one thing about following dharma second thing about karma is converting karma into karma yoga that is how we are going towards divinity what is see the meaning of going towards divinity is avoiding the next birth divine how will you become you will become divine only by that's why he said yo veti tatvataha in a sense if you come to know all your actions try not 
the action should not be driven by ego and egocentric desires. Not every single thing should be what is in it for me. That thing should not, if not everything, you know, some things will be there. It's okay. We are, we are only in the practice stages. We are in the initial stages. Suddenly we cannot reach that level. But at our level, what can we do? That is what I'm telling you. How do I make, make my, and only actions. Birth is gone. No, no chance. Actions. So that is how when I do it, when I keep, keep doing it that then that is when i go nearer and nearer to the reality means means when i am reducing my identification with the body with the mind with the intellect as i go on reducing that i become more and more and more divine divine okay so that is what this this uh, verse means that this we, we need to start disidentifying with the matter equipments and that will happen only when the mind is purified, when there is clarity in the intellect. This is not only intellectually, and intellectually we understood his birth. But unless we ourselves do it, it is not going to happen. But this is what this verse is, say, verse is saying. Though that who the, the one who knows tatvataha. So in in my book like I told you, because it's my father's book, he has actually only underlined tatvataha and written imp. That word, I mean, the verse is there, but in this, the keyword is that. These keywords we must understand so that we know what is uh, what is happening. Okay? So, tatvataha also at a deeper meaning is recognizing the under um, underlying changeless substratum in all the changes that are going on. We have seen this. You know, the, like we see the existence principle in all the inert objects, that there is that existence principle. There is the conscious principle in all the beings that, that in everybody, even in my enemy, it's the same God that is there and whom I hate. So I should not be hating them or not wanting to hurt them. Okay. Now. The next verse, verse 10, now this he told, uh, who knows Tattvata. So the question arises, okay, Bhagwan, how do I know you Tattvata? One method I've told you, but how do I know you? So Bhagwan himself is now answering. This is the next verse is sadhana for us. Vita raga bhaya krodaha manmayama mupashritaha Bahavo nyana tapasa puta madbhava magataha. Freed from attachment, fear, and anger, absorbed in me, taking refuge in me, purified by the fire of knowledge, many have attained my being. So, have they, have they really, are there people who have understood you, Tattvataha, in a sense, and reached? Yes, that's what Bhagavan is saying. There have been many who have attained my being, but what have they done? They freed themselves from attachment, fear, and anger. Appears like three different things, but this has come even in chapter two, chapter three. It is only one thing, attachment. Because it is attachment which is causing uh, uh, this. Raga is attachment which is called causing bhaya. Why? Because when I am attached to either a person or an object or whatever it is, if I don't have it, then I have fear. What if, what if I don't get it? What if I don't get it? Okay, you got it. You get that, then you have fear. What if I lose it? So attachment is giving rise to fear no matter what, whether you have it or you don't have it. If you have it, there is fear of lo loss. If you don't have it, will I get it? Will I get it? Will I get it? Then next is Krodha, anger. So if I don't get it, then I'm I'm angry because I'm so attached to it and I didn't get it. I I was so attached to this movie and I couldn't go to see it. Now I'm angry at, at, at whatever the obstacle was. So there is anger. If if I get it, there is greed. So every problem is being caused by this raga attachment. And attachment is I plus I want. Attachment and love are two totally different things. So attachment should not be mistaken for love. Love releases, attachment binds. In love, there is no fear. There is never, there can never be anger in love. So you love something truly unconditionally. That is how Bhagwan's love is. That is another aspect of it. Very, very hard for us to love unconditionally. Even our own children, we think they should behave as per 
how I think. Hopefully they'll look after me when I'm old. All these kind of expectations we have. When we have those, even when we have the expectation that he should do as per my, whatever I want him or her to do, it is attachment. It falls down. It goes a notch down. So unconditional love is no matter what the other person is doing. I love that person no matter what, no matter how he's behaving. So attachment has to be understood correctly. I've told you this before also. I love you letters are there. That Gurudev has given a really good uh, distinction between attachment and love. So because he's not using prema, he's using raga. Raga is attachment. Prema is love. So in Sanskrit, there is that, that this thing. Okay. So Vita, gone away for good. Gone why, why gone away for good? Because in deep sleep, we don't have raga, bhaya, and krodha. Deep sleep. That doesn't mean that we have we are realized. So vita is also important here. Vishesh and very well gone. Means gone for good. That means even in the waking state, these three things should not be bothering us. Not three. That one thing, if you reduce, you reduce attachment, fear will reduce. You reduce attachment, anger will reduce. The fear and anger are directly connected to attachment, like I told you. So work on the attachment that we have. So when I think, and you know how to work on attachment. Attachment is, you know what? I cannot live without this thing. That is attachment. I'll die. So if you think like that, then give that thing up. And see if you really die. Nobody dies. Nobody dies after anybody. Even person, I will die without such a person. I will die without, because death is not in our hands. Or if I don't get this, I will die. See, don't, don't take it. See what happens. Then you'll realize that, oh, really, I thought, oh, God, you know, or the other person will wither without my company. Nobody withers without anybody's company. Everybody's prospering. So this is how you, you, you have to have that own experience to know that nothing happens to anybody else. That's how this attachment will be reduced. Otherwise, then it is difficult. So bhaya krodha with that. Then what happens is when that attachment to this outside objects is reduced, Man maya, the person becomes man maya. He comes, he starts thinking about me. Man maya is to experience, it is actually man maya is adhyatma nitya that I have explained. Man maya is to see his presence in every situation, in every experience of life that I have. You will start seeing his presence when you reduce your attachment to the outside world. Because at attachment is always to the outside world, external world. Now that when it is reduced, your attention will start moving towards the substratum. So what have, then what will happen is every experience that you go through, you're going to see the hand of God in there, the substratum. This is because of the self. And that's, that's what's going to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that this good thing happened to me. Sorrow came. Okay, Lord, now you gave this to me. Now give me the strength to bear this loss. That is manmaya. And that happens when it, it everything follows. Then you become manmaya. When you start seeing the hand of God in every experience, every situation, every object, you become mam upashritaha. You surrender to me. You surrender. Automatically, it's following. Each one is following. The first, we have to start with Vitaraga. Give up attachment. Okay. Bhaya Krodha, don't worry about it. Automatic. When this attachment is reduced, seeing God will be easy in every single experience. That is what Adhyatma Nitya is, which he, later on he calls that. When you become Adhyatma Nitya, when you start seeing his presence in every experience that you're having, you will naturally surrender to him. Surrender will be natural. Oh Lord. If you're saying thank you, you know, something I would have done and there would have been a major accident. Thank you. I didn't have that. So this mom upashita will come. The surrender will come. It's like Draupadi, you know, finally she just put her hands like this. That is mom upashita. Ashrita, this person, he comes, he surrenders to me completely, leaves everything to me. 
because he understands that he really is, is not the doer. He's not the doer. Tattvataha is to understand I'm not the doer. When you understand that you're not doing anything, when things are happening around you, and it, this realization will come as the mind gets more and more purified, you will naturally surrender. Mam upasha. That, so, manmaya, then mamu. And then what happens? Mam upashita, then what happens? When the person is completely surrendered to Bhagavan, then in that knowledge, jnana tapasa puta, the knowledge that everything is being done by Bhagavan and nothing is, but that knowledge itself will purify you. That's why he says, that is Nyan Tapasa. What is Nyan Tapasa? Tapasa, Tapas. We have seen this Tapas word. Penance. But this is Nyana Tapasa. What is Tapas from Nyana? What is the Nyana? The Nyana is that there is nothing happening without his will. That Nyana, because we think we are doing See, everything I think I'm the one that is doing. I'm the one that is doing, right? So, jnana tapasa is to know that I am not doing anything. Things are happening around me. That jnana tapasa, he, he, he becomes purified, puta. He becomes extremely purified. What is extreme purification? Okay, jnana tapasa also is to understand mamu pashita also, surrender is to understand that all the modifications that are happening in the body, all the modifications that are happening in the mind and all the modifications that are happening in the intellect. What is modification in the body, gross body? Disease. The body gets old, the body gets disease, it decays, it has got illnesses, etc., etc. Modification in the mind is uh, shoka and moha, sorrow. Sorrows come, joy, sorrow. Modification includes joy, sorrow. Intellectual level is insult, when people insult you. So at those times, when these modifications are happening in, in these three, because modification only happens in matter, modification doesn't happen in Paramatma, Tattva, the substratum. So remaining unaffected, because what is the substratum? What is Ishwaratva? Ishwaratva is to remain Un, uh, unaffected in all the modifications that are happening in Prakriti. So if I can remain unaffected when the modifications are happening, I don't get unaffected. That doesn't mean I don't treat my body. That doesn't mean that. huh? That doesn't mean whatever treatment is required, you take, but you don't get worried, upset, agitated, then you are, you have surrendered. Because you see, when you worry, you know, people, what one thing they don't understand about surrender is, they say, oh, Bhagwan, I'm completely surrendered about with you. Now, whatever you do, I accept. Then they worry. Then that is not true surrender. When you have surrendered a particular thing, you're worried about something, now you go surrender it to God. Bhagwan, you take care of this situation. I don't know anything. Then you must not worry. Otherwise, surrender is not complete. Then Bhagavan says, then you are worrying, then you do. Then why should I do anything? <laughs> no, really, Bhagavan says, see, you have, you are worrying, oh, let me, then, then you, you only do, now. why I should do? So you should not worry. It's very, this is very, very important point. You leave it and then you just say, okay, whatever you will give me the result, I will accept. Whatever. It take, you know, I have honestly done this and honestly, other than Swami Tejomayananji, everybody else laughed at me. And when I told Guruji, yeah, everybody thought, what, you're mad? They didn't understand. Guruji was the only one. Guruji said, no, you've done the right thing. Now just keep it like that only. Surrender. Surrender. Let him do. Whatever you want to do, you do. This is how you have to tell your Ishta Devata. That's where Ishta Devata helps. More than this Brahman, you know, Brahman and you can't talk to Brahman. It needs a personal God, a personal deity. And then you have a one-to-one -one conversation with that deity. And you say, this is it. I cannot do anything further. I have done. How you do? And then you stop worrying. That is Jnana Tapasa. That is Jnana Tapasa. And what is purification? What is the ultimate purification of the mind? We have seen absence of likes and dislikes, etc. 
the mind is what is creating the dichotomy of aham and idam. What is aham? I am here and you are there. I am here and that is an object. I am here and this is different. This aham idam dichotomy that is being created, mind is actually the substratum of the mind is the pure consciousness. In the pure consciousness, there is no dvaita at all. There is no dichotomy at all. Because pure self is alone is. There is nothing other, other than pure self to create a dichotomy. But the mind, the mind which is impure, which, what is impure mind? More of rajas and tamas. A mind which has got rajas and tamas in it, it creates this dichotomy of aham and idam. This is me, this is you. This is me, this is that object. And me and mine and you, this is what... Sri Ram has described Maya as, what is Maya? He says, Maya is me and mine and you and yours. So that you are different and your stuff is different and me and my stuff is different from you. This dichotomy when it merges, when the idam is understood to be nothing but a projection of aham or aham itself, that is what puta is here, purified. Jnana tapasa puta. So purified by the tapas of knowledge. What knowledge is it? That everything is happening because of Bhagavan. That is Mahamush Upashritaha. And how will that surrender come? By seeing the hand of God in every single circumstance. And how will I be able to see the hand of God in every single situation or experience? is when I reduce my attachment to the outside world. So it's it's like a step-by-step -step process, beginning with Vitaraga, gone away for good. Okay, any questions? Yes. One second, Prem Said first. Yeah, go ahead, Prem Said. Um, JG, you mentioned for dealing with attachment for us seekers, especially if it's an object, you know, do away with it and see if you can survive. And that makes sense for attachments to people when it's our children, our family, our, our friends, what can we do to reduce that dependence? Because that one often feels like it's the harder one to tackle. Okay. So one thing in dependence, there are two things. There's one thing is a physical dependence. A physical dependence is very diff difficult because, you know, like I may not be able to lift something heavy. So I'm dependent or I, I couldn't even... I had switched off my hot water tap when I went out and then I couldn't even get it to open. So that, that dependency is there. That we cannot help. What dependency we are talking about is a mental dependency. Physical dependency is not that important. There's some things you may not be able to do and then you're going to depend on whoever. But this mental dependency is that if something happens to that person, I will die. I will not be able to survive. That dependency to people. If you're thinking like that, know that that is an attachment, but you love has to be there. So when love is there, suppose if that other person does something that you don't condone, you don't like, you must be able to still love, not hate that person. Or like, now I don't like you. You did this. Now I don't like you. It happens. People say, you know, friends, friends, and then you don't call them for a few days and they're like, they go that is attachment what we talk here attachment is mental attachment of course physical attachment see physically like gurudev has also said physical attachment is not there otherwise you'd be carrying our house and children on our shoulders and walking that's not possible so physically we are not attached physically but physical dependence will be there and okay that is understood and that's fine but this mental dependence that i cannot survive without this other person that mental dependence sh should not be there okay love has to be there that that is different that that does it does it help yeah i i was just wondering if there if there are things we can do to reduce that mental dependence even, you know, uh, when that thought comes up, what, what, what is a way that we can try and reduce that thought? The, the mental depend, you, you have to understand that the substratum between him and me is the same, her and me or him and me is the same, right? We are one. 
because this dependency is coming among two people, right? That is one way, knowledge way, that even though I think we are two different people, we are not, we are one. The second thing is bhakti, surrender to God, to personal deity, that will help too, right? And that is how it is because you, you need to, uh, people, uh, it is more uh, difficult to reduce attachment to people, I agree. And that's what was happening to Arjun. What did Arjun say? How can I kill this person, this grandfather of mine, right? Or guru, that is attachment. That's where Bhagwan has given this whole knowledge. So this knowledge will help as you go deeper into this knowledge, as you understand it tattvataha, as you understand it more and more in a sense, then your uh, dependency, mental dependency will reduce. It's a process. It's a process that you have to go through and it's hard. It is not easy, okay? Just because I'm saying it, it, it saying is easy, uh, it is difficult. Um, what can I say? I've gone through that. I've gone, my brother died at 30. My husband died very young. So I've, I've gone through it and I've survived. So now that experience is telling me that, you know, there's still, I still have fear, but it's telling me you survived all this, right? So, yeah. Yes, Rachana, you had a question. Yes, thank you, Jayaji. Um, what we have just discussed in this verse, my understanding is that all of these can come only through tremendous control of mind. Like if I have control over my mind, I yeah. will slowly walk towards this path. Yeah. But as which is very difficult. But um, supposing I have gained control over all of this. I know then, but I am not still a realized soul. Am no. I, Jivaji? No, no. That is my is confusion. Huh? That is my confusion. If I have like controlled everything over here, control, you know, attachment, love, everything I understand. Okay, okay. Okay, good, good question. There are two steps in realization. That's uh -huh. what sannyas, see the word sannyas, samyak nyasa, samyak nyasa it is, okay? Mm -hmm. What is, it has got two as one is renunciation. Okay. Samyak nyasa is, first is renunciation. So now by controlling the mind, you have renounced all your attachments. Yes. Okay. You have renounced fear. You have renounced anger. So yes. renunciation has happened. If you say mm. you have control, okay? Mm. So renunciation. Now the second step is to place that identity in the correct place. Samyak nyasa. That foundation you have to now realize that your, your oneness with the Supreme. Okay. okay. The, yes. There are two steps here. Realize, no, no. Control is control only. And still control also gives ego because I have control. So the I is still there. I never thought about it ah, like that. <laughs> that is the subtle point there. I have control. So your I is still alive. Yes. That I has to merge. That I has to merge. So for that I to merge, if you have even control, you, you must not say I have control. Thank you, Lord. It is because of your grace that I was able to control these things. Yes. That is then that becomes Mamupashitaha. So you have done, say, Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha. You have controlled. Okay. Now, yes. second step, are you, second step is that to say, to Manmaya would be to say, it's God's grace that I controlled all this. That is Manmaya. Yes. Okay. Because right now, what you're saying, I have controlled it, you're saying. You're saying, I control. <laughs> You didn't say, you did not say, see the words, how your own words did not come. Oh, by God's grace, 
I was able to control. That was not, I have controlled, you said. Yes, yes, yes. thank so you. That needs to first change to by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord, that because of you, that's why I told you every thought that comes and then you do the same. I've given you that example when I had lost my driver's license. And then I, I thought, what am I going to do and all that, you know, and I, I booked my appointment with ICBC, but when I was saying, sure, suddenly I got the thought that, oh, I dropped it on the road because I'd gone for a walk. Go back on that road and walk that path, the same path and see, look down on the ground and walk. And then I said, thank you, Lord. You, because you see, I, see, I had that thought and I did. So now I am, I have controlled instead of that, you go grace of God. Thank you, God, that control. Okay. Then that surrender will come that, oh, such a big thing I have done. I have renounced attachment fear. What a huge thing. Oh, Lord, keep me at your feet. And you may think, see, when we say I control, you don't know when that control will go away. In chapter two, Bhagwan said, when there will be vairagya, dispassion for things heard, already heard and yet to hear. So you are, we are at one stage in our life where we can say up to now, I'm very dispassionate towards this, 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 this. But you don't know what are the new thing you're going to hear. There was a Mahatma who went to the Himalayas and he came back and he said, I have controlled anger. He said, I have complete control over anger. One man came and slapped him across the face. He said, what do you mean you're slapping me? He said, but you said you controlled anger. See, when you're alone in the Himalayas and there's nobody else, of course, there's control over anger. Yes. When I'm, see, when I'm by myself, then it's, you know, this is, this is where I am now also doing tapas in my own mind that I'm alone. So I don't talk to anybody. I don't meet anybody. So there's no interaction with anybody. So I'm very happy. But am I going to be the same when I'm interacting with people? Because of COVID now, there is so much distancing. Like there's hardly, there was a time when I was only talking to you guys, like on Zoom. There was no this thing, right? So what you, now that, you, now change that I have control to thank you, Lord, that I, I gained control or by the grace of God, I've gained control. Then you will be able to surrender that ego. That ego has to be complete, that I has to be completely annihilated. And that would be placing your correct identity. So that out of the two steps, one, if you've done, which is a great thing, let me tell you, the second one has to be done. And that's where, that's where realization will come. See, that's why I told you, jnana tapasa puta, purification when this aham and idam, because when you say I have control, there is still the aham. Hmm. Hai na? Aham yes. to hai. I have controlled these attachment and raga and bhaya. These are idam. They are idam. But the aham is still there. Now the aham you, needs Anji, to yes. Never thought of it like that. Still the I remains. The I remains. That is, see, people don't realize that. That's where the doership is coming. That's why karma yoga becomes important. The five principles of karma yoga, that's where they actually come in that mm -hmm. sense of duty sense of surrender sense of uh, detachment prasad buddhi you know mm -hmm. so all that all right okay Got it, so, thank you <laughs> <you're welcome. laughs> yes yes nitya uh more a, a comment um on on you know building up on what Ramsay was asking uh, about more what works for me um, for example, I'll take his example even, you know, this weekend he's, uh, he's visiting, right? For me, what is working is staying in the moment, you yes. know? Oh, so instead of constantly worrying, which all weekend he'll come and when is the grandchild going to come back or whatever, is to stay the moment and, and you know, he's here, let's enjoy this moment and not, you know, same thing with spouse. Is the spouse going to be there in my old age to walk with me, to take care of me, da, da, da. No, no, we're here right now. Let's enjoy this breakfast. Correct. It's in, it's in Bhagwan's uh, hands. Yes. That, uh, that kind of works. I feel like that helps to uh, not constantly yearn for those experiences to happen again and again, but enjoy them as they come. Very good. Excellent. So remaining in the present, and that is always the instruction, right? You have this moment, enjoy it. Don't 
worry about what happened in the past and don't worry about what's going to happen next weekend and that will help. So that is also one way for sure. Okay, any other questions? All right, so we will, um, we will read the next verse. Uh, we will go into details next time, but let's read it at least. Again, this verse my father has written by heart. Memorize. That's the, there's not, there's no im, but by heart is there. So, whatever. Ye yathamam prapadyante tans tathaiva bhajamyaham mama vartmanu vartante manusha partha sarvashaha. In whatever way men approach me, even so do I reward them. My path do men tread in all ways, O son of Pratha. So we have a, a lot of people asking God for a lot of things. So what Bhagwan is saying here, whoever asks me for whatever, I always say Tathasu. Therefore, you know, like if you see deities, one hand is always like this. Ganesh, Vishnu, whoever, you know, maybe not Lord Shiva, but everybody else, the, the, Varada Hasta it is called, you know, means Tathasu, you know, you, you want money, Tathasu, you want this, Tathasu. So what, what Bhagwan is saying here is, whoever surrenders to me in whatever, like in Draupadi, she finally surrendered to have herself protected or Gajendra Moksha is there. He called out to Lord because the crocodile had caught hold of him. Uh, you know, and we have, we see Nachik, in Upanishad, we always see this Nachik, just like people, Shishas, who are asking for liberation. See, when I was uh, thinking of going for the course, and that was in like 2001, almost 10 years before I actually went, there was one Swami Nikhilananda in the mission, and um, I was saying, you know, I want to go for the course, I want to go for the course. And he said to me, uh, he said, if you ask for the course, you will get the course. Why are you not asking for liberation? He said to me at that time. But, you know, in my head, it was like, no, I have to do the course to get liberation. <laughs> because I was also very new. But I knew that the course is something I wanted to do because every year Swamiji would come and then there will be one Yadnya and then we'll do one Upanishad or one chapter of the Gita. And by next year, I had forgotten all these past things. So finally, I had this thought. And that's why I say, thank you, Lord. That I, See, I, there also I can see, see, I have this thought. And so I went and not like that. Yeah, God gave me the thought that, you know, I need to study everything together at one shot. And that's where the course idea came. And that's it. That was in PRC. That's I told Guruji right away that Guruji, I want to do that two-year course, Brahmachari course. And he, he, he didn't say no. He said, when your time comes, you will come. So just wait for your time. That's why I knew that 10 years before I actually went, I knew that someday I'm going to go because Guruji had said it, not that I decided. After that, I, I told Swami Nikila and he said, you will get course. Bhagavad. This is what it is. Ye yatha maam prapadyante. Dhruva is said to have, so Dhruva's story is like this, that see, he asked for a place where nobody can, uh, you know, uh, throw me out, right? We know the story of Dhruva. He was sitting on his father's lap, the king's lap, and the stepmother came and he said, no, 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 no. You are the son of the unfavorite uh, queen, so you cannot sit on the king's lap. So she put him, took him out of the lap. So he went and did tapas and then Vishnu Bhagavan came and he said, okay, I'm giving you this star. After many years, it is said that Narad Bhagavan was passing by intergalactic, you know, traveler, visa. So he, and Dhru was crying. And he said, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? He said, I made a mistake. I asked for this one stupid place. I should have asked for liberation. Bhagavan was standing in front of me. And Bhagavan didn't say to him, I can give you liberation. Bhagavan didn't say, you ask, what do you want? I give you that. I, it's nothing to do with me. You want liberation? I give you. Nachiketa said, no, I want moksha only. I don't want all these dancing damsels and bunny and life and blah, blah, blue, blue. I don't want all that. Okay, fine. Then you get moksha. So this is what he's saying. How they approach me, how they pray to me, how they worship and what they ask, I give them whatever. Mama vartman tu vartante. My path do men trade in always. How come Bhagwan? 
Why, why, are, why do you? This is an egoistic statement. Everybody is walking towards me. Because whatever we ask for, for from Bhagwan, we think that will make us happy. That is there. And I am the source of happiness. This is what Bhagwan is saying. I am actually the source of happiness without realizing that I think that this object will make me happy. So they don't ask for me. Who, who I am the source of happiness. If they ask for me, I will give myself to them. That means they will be happy for life, but they don't do that. They ask for an object. So I give them the object and they think, so that's because they think that they will get happiness out of that object or person or course or whatever, they are walking towards me without realizing that I am the source of happiness. This is what is meant by my path, my path do men tread in always. My path means they are coming towards me. Towards me means not towards me, towards happiness. Without knowing that I am happiness, they come to, that's what we do even. See, that's why this um, um, sadhana, sadhya goal is very important. I told you that there are many, uh, Viveka, there are many discriminations, right? Aunsha, aunshi. Sat, asat. One of them is sadhana and sadhya. So means and goal. What, what we are doing right now, and so far, even I was doing it, God is our means to get something else. Right? We pray to God, let me get a child, let me get a house, spouse, job, money, whatever it is, health course i used to pray god i want to go for course he gave me course so course whatever because i think that that will make me happy but what has to be understood is that god is the goal and this entire world should be made as a means and how can i make the world as a means to go to god is by doing converting karma into karma yoga is by doing vita raga bhaya krodha those are the means to reach god so therefore, sadhana, sadhya, vivek becomes very important in our uh, studies. For a spiritual seeker, we must know, we must be very clear of what goal I want and what the means are to that goal. See, even in material life, you want to become a doctor, you take art subject. Now, what is the point? You, you have to take something which will, science subjects, which will take you to, or you want to become a writer and you're doing PhD in chemistry. You want to become a cook, you're doing something else. So the goal has to be determined first and then you pick the means. Oh, that is my goal. That is all. So you pick God as the goal and then you see what are the means. Then karma yoga is the means. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha is the means. Renunciation, this, 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 all this. This renunciation, this tapas is going to come in this chapter. He's going to talk about 24 different kinds of tapas that people do. So that, that's what we'll be going into further. So this is what this is. So that's why he says that in all ways they are coming, they, they are coming to me, coming towards me. But without realizing that I am the source of happiness, they think that something else is. So they are, so I gave. Drew asked for that star. Okay, take star. Later on, he realized he was standing in front of me. But we don't. We also don't realize. Okay. Any questions? We will continue next time. Uh, oh, next weekend is not the long weekend, na, Prem said. Huh. So the next Sunday we'll be meeting and then we'll talk about the following Sunday. I'll give you just a heads up because I was told that the next and the Balviar will be closed, but I like I am here over the long weekend. So please think about it. If we can have the class, our class on that long weekend, it's okay with me. I, I would actually like to have the class, but if all of you don't want to, but next Sunday there is class. So we will meet next Sunday. Okay. And tomorrow also there is class. So uh, we, we can decide that next Sunday. All right. If there are no questions, we'll close now and we'll, we'll continue next Sunday.